So Lily here for Four Heavenly Beasts, day 44. So David's mom came by earlier this week, so I pulled it out. Figured I'd leave it out, and then you guys could, you know, see how much I've done. <laughs> so we're going to just keep working this page. I have to put it back in now. I need a minute. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, I'm kind of done with them popular opinions. I have very many of them, and they're unpopular. So, <laughs> I think we're good with that. So that was number six. Number seven. What is your favorite movie or TV show to quote at random? Oh, gosh. What do I quote a lot? Um, Because, like, I mean, I, I can quote Clue all day, but... I, I generally, not always, but generally, my quotes have, like, a purpose. You know, like, I'm relating them to something, or I'm just trying to be funny. If you haven't seen Clue, some of the jokes just aren't funny, because, you know, there's no context. Like, I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife. If you've never seen it, that probably isn't funny. But if you've seen it, you know. And it's funny. <laughs> um... I know every once in a while, uh, David and I and some of our friends will just be like, Nine Nine! From, you know, Brooklyn Nine Nine. That, oh, that show was really good. I really liked it. If, if you like comedies, and I guess, what is it, police procedurals? Does it even count? I mean, yeah, some of the episodes are legit cop work, so. I would highly recommend it. I very, I very much enjoyed it. I was happy with it. Um, I do shout out like decoy from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood every once in a while, just because I loved that line and I loved Max's reading of it. I think her name was Max. I think her or Maxine, something like that. Oh, it's been a. I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> um, what else do I quote? I don't know. Oh, well, moving on. Eight. What album can you listen to again and again without getting sick of it? Almost any. <laughs> Honestly. Um, <laughs> I've listened to the Pokemon 2 be a master CD a billion times. I still have the CD, so I'll still listen to it. Um, let's see. We have Kiss. Whatever one is Heaven's on Fire. I don't think that's the title of the CD. It's Razor's Edge. No, Razor's Edge is ACDC, which I could, I will also listen to. Um, any Garth Brooks CD. All of the Marianas Trench CDs I have. Unpopular opinion. I love Nickelback, so I will listen to a Nickelback album all the time. I really liked uh, Feed the Machine. I don't know if they've had any more albums since that one, but a, that one was really popular, at least when it came out, because a lot of people were like, oh, this doesn't, I didn't realize this was Nickelback at first, and, you know, it was really good, and I love Nickelback, so I don't care. If other people don't like them, that's fine. You don't have to be a jerk about it, though. That's my thing. Uh, I don't understand all the hate, because it's just, it's not necessary. If you don't like them, don't listen to their music, you know? Let's see. History? Is that what I'm looking for? Formation, Curb in the State, Silver Side Up, The Long Road, All the Right Reasons, Dark Horse. Oh, I loved Dark Horse. Here and Now, No Fixed Address, Feed the Machine was 2018. Upcoming tenth, uh, oh, upcoming tenth studio album, twenty nineteen to present. Okay, so, ooh, they released a cover of "The Devil Went Down to Georgia." I love "The Devil Went Down to Georgia." Personally, I prefer the one by Charlie Daniels Band over any other version I've ever heard. I don't know if that's actually the original or not. Did it say? On August 14th, 2020, the band released a cover of the Charlie Daniels Band song. Okay, that is the original. I love that one. And I am the person that 
The uh, the clean version of Son of a Gun is not my preference. I prefer the one where they curse. Sorry, not sorry. It just rolls off the tongue better. Um, <laughs> I, I And I love Devil Went Down to Georgia. But that whole album, there's only like three songs that I know really well. So I wouldn't want to listen to the whole thing. Because in my mind, listen to it again and again makes me think you listen to every single song. And you listen to it in order. Although out of order, eh, 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 it doesn't really matter. Uh, oh, uh, Avril Lavigne's first CD. Oh my god, I still love all of those songs. I will listen to all of them. And then after that, I don't know if I know any of her CDs. I, I know a lot of her songs. Like, I know Smile... Uh, Head Above Water. I can't think of other titles, but you know, I know other songs, but I never got any of her CDs, so I don't know what all the songs would be on one of them, but I love her voice. I love her style. I'm sure I'd listen to all of them. Um, yeah, I guess that's enough, huh? <laughs> Nine, what book changed your life? Ooh, I think, honestly, I think I would actually have to go with Pendragon by DJ McHale, McHale, M-A-C-H-A-L-E. I'm still not sure how to pronounce it, my bad. Um, I started reading those in seventh grade when we moved to Vegas, and that was the first book series that I read it as books were coming out, and I read the tenth and final book in the series as soon as it was mailed to me, because I pre-ordered it, so, you know, I was one of the first people to get it, and I just, I, f I blasted through it the next, like, two days, I think, and I cried so much, because I was so attached to all these characters, that I had to put it down <laughs> several times, <laughs> so it, it took me longer than normal, but it just, it made me get into loving book series prior to that i don't i don't know if i'd read a book series it was generally you know like rom-coms or not rom-com but romance books and whatever you know i was forced to read because of my class i read the pokemon books growing up you know those little booklets I, well, not booklets they were books but it was like 50 pages at most big font, large spacing, because, you know, it was for kids. So I guess technically that's a series. But it was it was Pendragon that really got me into loving following one or, you know, however many characters throughout a bunch of books and getting to really know that one character or five, however many, you know, getting to know these particular characters and following them throughout multiple books instead of just always meeting new people every single time and now i just i love reading book series harry dresden by uh jim butcher my absolute hands down no holds barred favorite book series of all time it's not perfect it starts out very rough but oh my goodness so good and uh my work is letting us do personal and professional development stuff. I want to get a ton of audiobooks if possible. I requested to get a bunch of Jim Butcher's audiobooks for a different series. So hopefully I'll get that and I'll get to listen to just a bunch of Jim Butcher. Because I, I, I'm enjoying Terry Pratchett, but the, the speaker is just killing me, you guys. <laughs> I just, I can't. Although, I'm not gonna lie, I am a little worried. It didn't say James Marsters on the books that I looked at. So, I'm not gonna get Spike, which will be disappointing, but... I'll be okay. I hope. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna move on now. Ten, what is one deal breaker you have on a first date? Well, being late clearly isn't one ditching me and you know just going in without me isn't one <laughs> um 
I mean, I guess just not showing up and not telling me why, that'd be a deal breaker. Like, you couldn't just tell me to my face that you weren't interested? You know, you had to ghost me? So, that would be, that'd be a no-no. Um. Hmm. I don't know. I don't plan on ever having another first date, so it doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> I'm not putting too much thought into this. Eleven, what is the strangest thing you ever did in high school? Hmm. What is the strangest thing I did in high school? Um. Hmm. Like, I... I don't know if I really did anything strange. I mean, I, I, I ate my lunch uh, in the gym hallway. I didn't eat it in the lunchroom because it was just, it was so noisy and just annoying <laughs> dealing with other kids <laughs> that weren't my friend group. So like, I was not the only one who would eat in the gym hallway. There was a bunch of us that would eat in there. So I wasn't, you know, alone or anything, but I guess that would probably be considered pretty strange. Um, I don't know if other high schools did this or anything, but we had lip sync battles at the end of the year, and, and it was always by year. So, you know, like the freshmen, the sophomores, the juniors, and the seniors would each get to do their own lip sync. And that was super duper cool. I loved it. I don't know if that would be considered strange or not, because I don't, I just, I don't know if that's a thing in, like, American high schools, <laughs> not overseas. Um, oh, well, actually, you know what? Oh, no, it's the strangest thing you ever did. I was going to say the strangest thing that I ever saw. You know what? I'm still going to go with that. So, I... Let's see, was it my junior year? Sophomore year? I was still taking the bus. So I want to say sophomore year? The bus pulled up to the bus stop, you know, where all of us were. And the anarchy symbol was spray painted on the side of it. And we were all kind of just like, what's going on? You know, like we, we had regular just big yellow buses, so it was quite noticeable that it didn't look normal. We got in, we get to the school, and we're kind of like fielded immediately into the gym. We're not allowed to go to the other parts of the school. But even then, looking at everything, we could see the anarchy symbol was everywhere. And we're brought into the gym, and they tell us like, yeah, you know, kids essentially broke into the school overnight and chained up some of the doors they spray painted all over and the cops are here they're gonna you know as you're exiting the gym everybody has to go through the same double doors here at the front and they're gonna check your hands make sure you don't have you know like spray paint residue or, or whatever i don't know what the correct term is but you know just to check our hands and make sure we don't have spray paint on us and Gosh, I, I think we did finish school that day. Uh, on the side of the main building, it said F Mr. Brown, and it, it was spelled out. Uh, Mr. Brown was our vice principal. A lot of people didn't like him because he was very strict. So the, the principal was a complete and utter pushover. He never enforced anything. He never did anything. So, surprise, surprise, my goody two-shoes didn't care for him. But I liked Mr. Brown because people didn't screw around when Mr. Brown was there. And so, obviously, you know, somebody who didn't like him in particular. And there were um, obscene body parts of a man spray-painted at a couple places. And that's when we eventually learned that some of the doors were chained from the inside. And we eventually also found out that the, I believe it was the health teacher, 
I guess he would leave his windows unlocked or open on the second story. But whoever did this, they got in through his window and they chained up the doors and they left through his window. And I I don't think he got in trouble, but I know he had to talk about it and, and I I think he claimed that he got in trouble, but I don't think he actually did because like he didn't have to take time off work or anything. Or at least not that I remember. But I I know he was upset about it because, you know, like he blamed himself that it was his fault that they got in, which I just think is so unfair. Ugh. He was such a nice teacher. Like, I, I had some teachers that were not nice and they were total douchebags. He was not one of them. And so to potentially have him lose his job because, you know, he, he there are some schools that absolutely would have thrown him under the bus and blamed him and fired him over it. I don't think that's right, you know? Uh, ugh. And, um, gosh, when we, I remember when we were leaving, my dad actually was one of the guys who showed up to try and help clean the place out. He was in uh, civil engineering. So, you know, they did plumbing and electricity, like all that kind of stuff. So, you know, they were the ones who were coming in trying to fix it all up. And my dad was like, Elizabeth, if you know who did this, you had better turn them in. And I was like, Dad, if I knew who did this, you you would have known who it was before I even got on the bus. Like, no, I, I, I have always taken my education very seriously. And, you know, that was several hours out of my day where I, I didn't get to study or, you know, work for my class because we were in the freaking gym talking about this. Oh, man, I'm still kind of heated about it. <laughs> um, and then the other thing that happened was, so we, we were on base. That's So we were going to school, you know, at, and it was an American school. It was on base. And so everything was in English. There was a kid who I guess he hung a wire from one end of the street off base to the other end of the street. And a girl on, like, a moped or something drove through it. It did not decapitate her. Thank God. It didn't kill her. I I don't believe it, it paralyzed her, but I'm pretty sure, you know, like, she had to be rushed to the hospital. He was expelled. And he was never allowed back into the country, which I completely support. That was... I... There's a point where you're just like, how stupid are you? You know? Like, not only are you in someone else's country, you are putting somebody in serious danger. Like, I, I think the only reason she wasn't beheaded is because she was on a moped instead of a motorcycle. So she wasn't going fast enough that the wire could have, you know, cut through her. But, like, that's still just... How could you ever think that would be okay? You know, like, oh my god, I went to school with some idiots, you guys. That's what this comes down to, basically. <laughs> Alright, so we're just gonna move on. I didn't really do anything strange. I'm other than whatever I talked about before. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve. Have you ever fallen for a scam? If so, what was it? Yes, I fell for the, um... You know, oh, take this pill and you'll lose weight. Or, you know, like, it, it'll quench your appetite so you won't eat as much. I don't remember. It, it was, it wasn't grapefruit. But it, it was some kind of, you know, like, fruit-based pill where they were like, yeah, you know, this is known for lessening your appetite. And I, I took it for a while and it was really cheap at first. You know, for the first couple months, it was only like $3.00. And then I was charged like $30. And so I messaged them and I was like, hey, I want this canceled. I, I, I can't afford this. I'm not doing this. I can't do it. And they're like, oh, okay, it's canceled. And I was like, cool, thanks, bye. They sent me another one and charged me for another one. And I contacted them and I was like, hey, here's my proof. I had this canceled. G Gardenia? No, that doesn't sound right. 
I don't know, something, whatever, it doesn't matter. And they were like, oh, well, okay, you, you have two. And I was like, no, I don't. No, I don't. And they kept fighting and fighting me with it. So I went straight to my bank. And I was like, hey, you know, like I had printed everything out. I was like, here's the proof that on this day I said I wanted it canceled. And they told me, okay, it was canceled. And they're still mailing me some. And they're charging me for it. And I, I, they're not canceling. Like, can you help me? And I think they were talking about, you know, like, we'll get involved. And they're like, or we could just cancel your card and open you a new one. And you don't have to worry about it. And I was like, okay, if that's what, wh whatever is easier for you guys, like whatever will work, I don't care. So I got a new card and they refunded me for the last one. They refunded me for the one that was charged after I sent the email asking for it to be canceled. So that was nice. And I, I haven't fallen for anything like that since because I'm older now. I'm, I understand how the world works. I understand how scams work. <laughs> And I, I work very hard at not overeating on my own. I, I don't take a pill for it. So, and honestly, I don't, I don't remember for those couple of months that I was taking it that it actually helped. I don't recall it lessening my appetite at all. So, yeah. Um, I'm sure I've fallen for other ones, but that's... The only one that's coming to my mind, and that is the, the most major one. So. 13. What was the most outrageous lie you believed as a child? Um. See, like, I believed in a lot of stuff. That was super dumb. And it wasn't because someone lied to me. It was because I was super dumb. <laughs> Like, I'm sure I've talked about this before. Forrest Gump. I thought that the the actor who played the young Forrest Gump was Tom Hanks. And they waited until he was older to film the scenes when he was an adult. That's stupid. No one ever told me that. I can promise you. Not a single person ever told me that that's what they did. I just assumed that. You know? Like, I, I didn't put together, like... Yeah, they got someone who was really young, and they found someone who was a lot older, and they looked similar enough that they made it work, and they filmed them at the same time. I just didn't get it. So, that was pretty outrageous. It was kind of dumb. But, a lie. I mean, I did believe the whole, uh, it takes seven years to digest gum, but I don't know if that was even necessarily a lie versus like that's what people actually genuinely thought for a long time so my understanding is a lot of the times when it when it comes to the whole you know oh yeah it takes seven years to digest gum a big part of that is that schools were trying to get people to stop chewing gum and you know like oh you're not allowed to chew gum so they would either swallow it or just spit it out and stick it under their, their desk. And they were trying to get people, you know, trying to get students to just stop chewing gum in general. And hey, if you swallow it, it takes seven years to, di to di digest. So I, I don't remember the first place I heard that. I feel like the first time I heard it was from a friend. Which, you know, they wouldn't have done that maliciously. At least not the kind of friends I have. So... But if they heard it from a teacher who was saying it because of that, you know. Although, honestly, all that did was cause students to stick their gum under tables and desks more. Instead of, you know, just spitting it out in a trash can or, trash can or swallowing it. Because, you know, they don't want to get caught with it if they're not supposed to have it. And gum is great. <laughs> like, I understand if the student is just... That's annoying. That would drive me crazy. But if they're chewing the gum with their mouth closed, who cares? That would help me concentrate sometimes, especially when I was studying. So, that one was always just, I get it, but it's dumb. It's dumb. I don't know what else I believe that was outrageous. I, yeah, I think, I think that's all I got. 
14, what activity do you waste the most time on? Waste? Um, I mean, like, the, the activities I like to do don't feel wasteful. Like, I, I spend the most time cross-stitching or, you know, like, planning for D&D, but I don't feel like my time is wasted for either of those. Especially with cross-stitching, you know, because I listen to audiobooks while I cross-stitch. So, I don't feel that's wasteful at all. And then planning for D&D, I... I've always loved creating worlds and coming up with ideas, so that doesn't feel wasteful to me at all. That feels like I'm utilizing my imagination and I'm having fun. And then we actually get to play and I have even more fun. So, yeah, um, I play Wordle every day. <laughs> but I don't feel like that's wasteful for me. I feel like that's an enjoyable, you know, three to ten minutes of my day. Where I'm just trying to come up with a five-letter word that utilizes either letters I haven't found or ones I already have. But ultimately, it's not that much time. You know, it, it's just five-letter words. It doesn't take forever. I don't know. Yeah, I'm... That's all I got. 15. What technology are you most hooked on? The internet? <laughs> like, how can you pick anything else? Unless I have to, like, specify, which I guess would be my, my computer or my phone. Because I am my iPad. Like, I spend a lot of time on all three of those. It just depends on what I'm doing. You know, like, if I'm going through Facebook, I'm probably on my iPad or my phone. If I'm going through YouTube, I'm probably on my computer. So. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Like, I, I don't think I could ever go back to not having the internet. Because it's just, it's so nice having so much at my fingertips just readily available constantly. You know, I, I grew up using a dictionary. I know how to use a dictionary. But, you know, I, I can go to the library. I, I know the Dewey Decimal System. I can find books. But it's just, it's, it's so convenient. And then, generally, generally, not always, you can find multiple sources. So, you know, if... You find one thing and you're like, that doesn't sound right. You could double check it pretty easily. Like, yeah, unfortunately, there are people out there who, you know, like, think the Earth is flat and think we didn't actually land on the moon. And so if you go searching for it, you will absolutely find proof that, yep, those things didn't happen. So <laughs> you're always going to be able to prove or disprove basically anything because there's just always information out there you know whether it's real or not it's there so it does take a lot to be able to distinguish between what is legitimate and what isn't and sometimes frankly it's you just can't not everything is black and white there are things that are gray so you might want to be able to prove that, you know, your stance on this is correct, but it's an opinion. You can't be correct. You can't be incorrect. It's just how it goes. I don't know how I got onto that. Oh, well. 16. If you could donate $100,000 to any philanthropic cause or charity organization, which one would you choose and why? Um, uh, the, the St. What is it? St. Jones... Oh, no, what is this? Hold on, I have to Google it now. Saint. Dang it, Saint. Is it Jones? Saint, wait, Saint Joseph? No. Dang it. it. It's a children's hospital. So maybe I'll do children's hospital. Um, maybe just Saint. Dang it. 
Oh, St. Jude's. There we go. St. Jude's Children. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Like, I... It's children, you know? Like, how can you not want to help them? What, 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 what has a child done to deserve cancer and things like that? Nothing. I mean, I would also argue what, is it, what have most adults done to deserve that? I don't think all my family members that have passed away from cancer deserved that. But at the very least, you know, if you're 80 and you die from breast cancer, that's a lot, I guess, easier to comprehend than it is a child of eight years old passing away from brain cancer. You know, like, at least the 80-year-old got to live their life. They got to experience what life has to offer. That eight-year-old, they they got nothing, you know? Like, that that's, that's so unfair. I wish I had $100,000 to donate. Oh, my gosh. Okay, 17. What is a product or service you are willing to spend more money on to get better quality? Um, oh, my car. Um, and not, 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 not the service, that's the product. I like my Toyota. I got one of the better ones because I could afford it and I wanted it. <laughs> uh, um get better quality. Seas candy. Best chocolate in the world. Oh my god. I'm like, bar none. Butterscotch squares. Scotch kisses. The milk Bordeaux. So amazing. It takes so much uh, self-control for me every time we walk by Seas Candy to not go in and just buy a two-pound box. Because I will absolutely do that every single time I go. I will make it last. I don't eat it all in one day, thankfully, but dude, so good. Like, I, growing up, I was always like, oh, Reese's, Reese's is the best chocolate in the world. No, it's not. Seas Candy is. <laughs> Reese's is still delicious, don't get me wrong. Like, I will still eat a Reese's, but... Seeds candy. I haven't had seeds candy in a while. I'm actually very proud of myself. I'm doing really well on, on eating better, generally at least. <laughs> yeah. 18. Who is the most interesting person you know? Hmm. Who is the most interesting person I know? Like, that, that's difficult, because I'm a military brat. Like, you know, I've met people who have been around the whole world, have been to places I can only dream of, and that, that in and of itself is interesting to me. I love traveling, so I, I love hearing about these other places people have been to and their experiences at those places. Who should, who, who should I narrow it down to? You know, honestly, I, I don't want to. Like, I just, I know a lot of interesting people. And even, even the people who have never moved out of the place they were born in can still be incredibly interesting. I, I, I feel like I have to amend what I said before, where, like, just, just because you haven't been anywhere doesn't mean you're not interesting. People are so intriguing and so complex that there's so much to us. There's always something interesting to be found. 19. Have you ever lost a bet? What was it? What were the consequences? Um, I'm sure I have. I don't know what. probably a dollar <laughs> like I I'm not a betting person I'm not a gambling person it's that's just not my jam so I wouldn't bet much but generally it would be just with my like close friends 
so it wouldn't be a huge thing anyways. Yeah. 20. What is something that never fails to make you laugh? David. My family. When I say something stupid, when I misspeak, I always laugh at myself. <laughs> um, Clue. I always laugh at Clue. That is just hands down. Best movie. I love it. It's so funny. Uh, Blazing Saddles always makes me laugh at... Um, um, oh my gosh, what's his name? Mel Brooks? Mel Brooks always makes me laugh. Spaceballs. History of the World Part 1. Uh, Blazing Saddles, I already said. Um, I'm picturing these movies and nothing's coming out. Men in Tights. Oh my god, I love Men in Tights. Dude is so funny. Like, if you haven't seen a Mel Brooks movie, you need to. Especially if you like comedies. Like, dude is just hilarious in so many ways. He's amazing. And that is the end of Four Heavenly Beasts, day 44. I got six hours and one minute of footage. There it is. So pay the, the page actually ends, like, here, I think. So I, I went a lot further down, but... I started the red and I was like, well, it continues. I'll just go until I run out of thread or I, I have to make too big of a jump that I'm not willing to do. So I, I have really started the Phoenix. You can definitely tell this is not part of the tiger. <laughs> but oh, no, I do like you can really see the outline of the tiger. You know, like, here we go. There's his tail. This is his footsie. Or, well, this is his this is difficult to do. This is his footsie. That's his leg. So I, I, I called David over and I was like, can you tell what this is? And he was like, no. I was like, that is the ideal scritches part of a cat. <laughs> or at least my, my cats always like scritches right at the start of their tail on their back, you know. Okay, I'm rambling. I am done. It's still kind of light out, but I'm just... I'm good. My arm's a little sore, so I don't want to push it. I got six hours. Like, did good. I got, I got a lot. So, yeah. Like, subscribe, share, comment. All that jazz. And I'll see you guys in the next video.